Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, Immediately he saw the heavens being torn open, and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Robert Morris. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I lived in the Boston area in 2004. That's the year the Boston Red Sox won their first World Series since 1918. To say that Boston fans were anxious would be a laughable understatement. Although St. Louis fans may remember that event with a little bit less joy, Boston fans had literally spent a lifetime waiting and hoping for it. The anticipation was enormous. This human experience of anticipation helps to explain why the arrival of John the Baptist on the shores of the Jordan River was such a big deal to first century Jews. God had spoken through the prophet Isaiah as quoted in today's text, I will send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way. God had later prophesied through Malachi, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and awesome day of the Lord arrives. And then, silence. The prophets went silent for four and a half centuries. That's a long time to wait. A long time for anticipation to build. Now here comes John, the miracle baby of Zechariah and Elizabeth. John was baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, we read in verse 4. If I went down to the Housatonic River here in Newtown and started proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, the only response I'd be likely to get would be some quizzical looks from fishermen and kayakers. But not John. John was the one they'd been waiting for. For 450 years they'd waited. And to borrow a modern phrase, John went viral. We read in verse 5 that all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him. All the country. Multitudes are coming to hear him preach and to receive his baptism. He was a hero, the man of the hour. He could easily have basked in all this attention and fame. Could even have seen this as an opportunity from God to grow his ministry. Any of us in his place would have been deeply tempted to do so. Who among us doesn't swell with a bit of pride when our hard work is finally acknowledged or our efforts are finally successful? It's easy to think, I did this. Easy to forget that it's God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, who's given us all that we are and who daily and richly provides for all our needs. It's this very pride of which we must repent. Today is Ash Wednesday, when we are reminded that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. We have nothing that we were not given by God's divine fatherly goodness. 
Today is not a day of personal glory, but of deep repentance. And so we do as John did. No matter what glory or success might come our way, we acknowledge that there is another far greater. For John says in verses 7 and 8, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I've baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. As John himself would later say of Jesus, he must become greater, I must become less. That's what this day is for, a humble and heartfelt acknowledgement that we are sinners, saved only by the grace of God in Jesus Christ, and a quiet thanks to this Jesus who has baptized us with water and fire and the Holy Spirit. In Christ, we don't seek out or glory in earthly praise. Instead, in body, mind, and soul, we look to Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. We give all glory, as John did, to he who is greater than I. And we live our lives in eager anticipation of his promised victory. May the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.